So usually when I pick colors of my paper, I really don't use too bright of colors, usually like more dull, like earthy kind of tones. And there's a reason for that. The reason to set the light source, to be able to put where the brightest part of it is, not necessarily the darkest. So it gives you that freedom to have the dark already in the background and, and you're the one who gets to pick where that light comes from. Because usually it's one of the first things that I always do when I'm starting to do a sky is where's my light coming from? Your ambient light, at least. What's going on guys? Chalk it up, episode four. Got a cool one today. I put a, did a layout here of what I'm going to be using for this one, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm using. Um, I'll go through all of the materials, or yeah, all the uh, equipment that I'm using as we go, but this is just a quick little view. Got about four different color chalks on this one. Um, this one I just want to stress, like, creating a light source, and we're going to do, to do that, to highlight that, we're going to create... A cool contrast with some cool cloud works. Uh, I call this one Rocky Mountain High. It reminded me of just something you'd see in Colorado, and it, it had to do with the John Denver song. You see how I just did that? I'm just whipping through like some sunbeams, getting a figure out where my bright light source is and where I'm going to have this really hard contrast with this cloud here on the left. Start highlighting the clouds, blend those in a little bit. So now, sky's done already, layer one, I'm going to layer two here. I'll do a cool little mountain range here, nothing too crazy. I really wanna, I don't wanna get too nuts on the detail with this one. I really wanna make the sky kind of the focal point in this drawing. See, I'm kind of preparing for the future here, getting some uh, some highlights down in the water, because I'm gonna do like some uh, like a big mountain. This is cool too, because we have a light source on one side of the mountain range coming through we're going to have your highlights on the left, and on the left side, the highlights are going to be on the right. So it's kind of cool. you got this little valley here in the middle where our highlights are going to kind of uh, group together here in the middle. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when you're, you know, you figure out where, which, where your light source is coming from. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal, especially when you're doing your mountain ranges and whatnot. So we're going to go through do a little bit of shadow. I'm really trying to save a lot of the paper here because... The, the blue with the marker now, since that marker has faded away, I don't know if you can see that really well on this, how that how the marker has now faded with the left darker before. But I want to save some of that. I want to keep some of that paper that has that lighter gray on it. I don't want to, you know, just completely diffuse it with uh, this brown that I'm using. ending of every layer, do I need to use some white chalk pencil to kind of highlight some things here. Doing kind of like a, a light fade out here, I'm trying to be really careful. I don't want too much like mist going on here uh, because we're going to make this so close to the, uh, the line where the, uh, the water begins. Yeah, a little bit of planning ahead. Lines of trees that are going to create like this boundary between the water and whatnot. But again, I'm really just going up and down with this marker. And again, we're using the marker to kind of just give us some solid color back here. And I'm trying to keep this line that I'm working on pretty horizontal. Tucking 
some of these little lines of trees going up into the you know into the uh, the curvature of the mountain up, up the side there. Again, very far away. I'm thinking really, really small, not a lot of detail. It's kind of like your brain kind of like fills in the gaps. These are really close. I want water all the way back where I just drew that one quick water line. Now I'm basically just drawing in this, using this line to draw in the edge. That's all you need just to create that little detail. All of a sudden you have that separation. And I want to work into that back area there because I don't want to have to mess with it because I like to work back to front. So I want to work, you know, I want to work those highlights in there immediately as fast as I can. Because I don't want to mess with that area anymore. A little fade out here and there. What I'm doing right there is I'm, I'm using the, the curvature of the mountain to kind of catch those highlights. And you can see how I'm doing that. You're barely going to see these in the end of the drawing. You, I mean, literally, you will barely see any of that, but your eye is going to know that it's there and literally create that illusion for you. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm taking a, a lighter color marker. This will dry really, really light. You can use the pastel for this, and I think I actually go through with a little bit of pastel, but some of those details you really can't get from the chalk and I'm working those in into the water, into the reflections with the uh, marker. It'll fade out here pretty quick. Uh, going through a little bit more detail there, I'm gonna probably hit that water line a little bit more, separate those two images, you know, separate the reflections, darken it up a little bit. I you can see how I do that a lot. When I go over something with a marker, when the marker's still wet, I'll hit it with my finger. Be careful doing that. Sometimes you can smear it. I've done it enough. I kind of got pretty good at it, but that's something to keep in mind and you know, keep trying because it definitely helps, especially when you're working in deeper into a background like this, where you can get that. You know, you're just grabbing some of that chalk that's laying on the paper and you're just pulling it over and it helps fade it out a little bit. I'm starting to bring that water, those water lines a little bit more forward. We're starting to make a little bit bigger trees. I'm still using that same color marker because I really don't need that big of that much separation between those those two areas yet. Um, I'm gonna grab a darker one here in a minute to really start hammering some uh, foreground stuff home. Yes. And here I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, we're gonna see a little bit more detail. And a little bit darker because again, we're moving forward get darker as they get closer to you. It's more like the opportunities and something is closer to you to have more light reflecting back to you. Going through grabbing a little bit darker marker because sometimes I, I pick up some of the white chalk, too much of the white chalk from the background. But now again, I'm pulling a little bit more into the foreground here. And I'm not going to do much past this point of the layering in this drawing just because you don't have to all the time. Sometimes this, this drawing is going to end up, I can tell already, it's something that you're looking at from far away. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's fine. You don't always have to throw things into your foreground. I remember being younger and watching uh, St. Bob on TV and he would always end up throwing that crazy tree in the foreground and he, I could hear my mother from the kitchen like actually get nervous about it. You know, sometimes when you, you, when you do that you have to be prepared that some of the little cool little things you're going to do are going to get overlapped foreground but they're still there and they still create that depth even those little tiny pieces that you see still create depth in your eye Going a little darker marker, worrying about this foreground a little bit. Again, I'm using like this horizontal motion. It's kind of like I'm stacking little pieces of this uh, 
this water's edge on top of each other. Just really small thin lines and see I'm gonna throw a nice big tree anchor in the side over here I think too. Something with a little bit more detail. You get a little bit of detail in these branches. You kind of see I'm almost, literally I'm almost scribbling but I'm trying to like literally I guess I'm, the, my goal anytime I start a tree like that, I'm trying to make sure that the edges don't look like the edge of a marker. And once I have that, then I can highlight it and work my way out of it. It'll be able to look something realistic. So I think I'm probably just about done with the marker edges. So I'm going to go through got my white pencil and really hit some of these with some really cool highlights on the tips of these branches here. I'm really going to nail down these water lines. And Go and remember those water lines, all of them, no matter what. I don't think I've ever seen a water line that's curved unless it's on a wave. But any of yeah, any of these water lines are always going to be straight. Think horizontal. Draw it from your shoulder. And you know, I think on this one too, I think you can see those reflections that I did of those other trees, how that marker's kind of faded now. But I think still I'm going to do... So I'm going to pull down some marker here in a minute and pull some of that brown that I have in the clouds into the trees. up a little bit, get it in those background trees I did a long time ago, we get a couple more little reflections in here with the marker, and here I go, I'm going to take some of this, it's like a dull, kind of like a, it's like a like burnt umber kind of color, not a lot of red, you don't want any red in that, in that brown marker, or that brown chalk there, no red, all blue, meaning stay away from the siennas, because they start getting a lot more red, and this has more yellow. Alright, fade those out with my paint roller, nail in a couple more lines. Throw a couple little stones and rocks in here, you can start seeing it's like, you know, they look like little stones from here, but they're really like giant boulders, you know, that are sitting up on the, uh, the side here. Like I said, I was trying to learn how to play play guitar and learning how to play Rocky Mountain High again. And I literally made this drawing like a couple hours after it. A couple of water lines, throw a signature on this one. So it will be about done. Guys, work on this one. Remember, it started because of that contrast in the sky. Think about where your light source is coming from. See you guys on the next one. Keep chalking it up. Chalk amongst yourselves. These concepts that we're going through, like I said, they're not rules, because rules mean you couldn't break them. And concepts you can, because you need to find, take a concept and make it your own and figure out what you can do with it. But these concepts are universal throughout all these, you know, through most mediums. Thanks for watching. Subscribe button, like button, share it. We want to see the work that you guys are doing at home. Send it in to us, please. So we appreciate it. We appreciate the support. Subscribe, like it, share it. Message us at chalkitupmessages at gmail.com. You can DM us on IG too at chalkitup101. So thanks, guys. We appreciate it.